Growing up in rural Iowa, I have many fond memories surrounding bugs. From going out in the cool summer air and catching fireflies, or collecting cicada skins, or counting the middle segments of a woolly bear. Unfortunately, many of these bugs are in danger of dying out, and this is a problem. I've researched the importance of bugs, and not only do they function as the bottom of the food chain, but also as pollinators, or pest control. Heidi Segrist, who is the assistant editor of the Virginia Quarterly Review, a national journal which prides itself on providing the best of contemporary literature, referenced a 2019 study in her article, Insect Extinction, which estimates a 2.5% decline in insect populations per year. To put that into perspective, the state of Washington takes up about 2.3% of the U.S. population, according to the 2020 census. So today I would like to go over three reasons for the insect population decline, and three ways that we as individuals can help. One reason would be pesticides, which is very prevalent in Iowa. In 2020, Kim Aaron, a certified horticulturalist and landscape designer, wrote the, the Pollinator's Victory Garden, which goes over reasons why insects are declining in the introduction, and she lists widespread pesticides, both man-made and organic. Another reason would be the habitat loss. Heidi Segrist, in her article, Insect Extinction, cites city growth and the vast monoculture crops, such as corn and soybeans, that we grow here in Iowa, that take the place of insects' habitat. Kim Ehrman also mentions this in Pollinator's Victory Garden, also including the construction and renovation that takes place for houses, parks, and malls. Another reason would be fear. For many people with severe or even deadly allergies, this is very understandable, but other people are just taught from a young age that instead of insects being beneficial, there's something to be feared, something scary, um, from cartoons and commercials, even memes nowadays. Now, I'm not calling for a ban on all pesticides, or that we should stop all construction, or that people with allergies are not important, that's not what I'm saying. But with insects being such a vital part of our ecosystem, what can we as individuals do to help them? Well, to start, we could try removing them or just avoiding them instead of killing them outright. Two bugs that are most prone to this would be spiders and wasps. Um, an article that was written by collaborating universities in 2012, which includes the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Program, was called The Common Spiders Around the House, which um, goes over spiders' benefits as pest control due to how many insects they eat. It also mentions that most are harmless and incapable of biting people, even when they're coaxed. It only mentioned two spiders that required immediate attention, the black widow and the brown recluse, both of which are rare to find this far north. In Reconsidering Wasps, a an article by the National Wildlife Federation and written by wildlife gardener Laura Tangley, she cites biologist Siernan Sumner, who mentions wasps' important role as pollinators and as pest control. However, he mentioned that most people fear their stings. To counter this, biologist Heather Holmes suggests removing wasp nests in early spring, when the colony is still small. However, naturalist Dave Majewski suggests that this should only be done when it's in an unavoidable area, such as a children's play area or a doorway. Otherwise, they should be left alone to do their job. Another way that we can stop um, pest decline or insect decline would be to stop spraying our personal lawns with pesticides, as it not only kills beneficials and pests, but it becomes less effective over time. Timothy Abbey, a horticulture educator, and specifically for pest control in Pennsylvania State University, wrote an article in 2008 titled Letting Beneficial Insects Work for You, where he says that by using reg pesticides regularly, insects become resistant, and this is not an issue with using beneficial insects as pest control. In that same article, Abbey states that if you are going to use a pesticide, you should find the pesticide specifically for the pest that you are targeting and that you should try to find a natural one so that you limit the impact of surrounding insects. Another thing to keep in mind about pesticides is that you should wait before using them. Sally Morgan, a small farm owner, wrote a 2002 book, The Healthy Vegetable Garden, where she says that predator populations tend to lag behind prey populations. And if you jump the gun well, um, before spraying pesticides, you can wipe out both populations and destroy any chance of a natural balance. 
The third thing we can do to help the insect populations is to give them a safe space to live. In the 2004 article, Luring Beneficial Insects to Your Garden, by gardener Kate Warfolk of the Natural Life magazine, she suggests placing rocks or grass pathways and leaving debris on the shrubbery, anywhere the insects can be that is safe from the sun and from disturbances such as lawnmowers. And in the Pollinator's Victory Garden, Kim Ehrman suggests planting a diversity of wildflowers and an abundance of them for food. With all this being said, I hope that today we have learned um, what hurts the insect populations and how we as individuals can help nature's number one defense against pest outbreaks. Every little bit helps. So even if one person here decides to stop spraying pesticides in their lawn and start bringing new life to it, I'm sure we can make a better future for each next generation. Because every kid deserves to wonder at the really cool caterpillars out there. Together we can turn the tides and save our creepy crawly friends.